Good evening, my name is Richard. This is over and over and over again. It is, of course, the highlight of the week. It is the start of the weekend. It is, of course, your Arsenal women's show. We have got a busy show for you. We're going to look back on last week's brilliant victory over Bristol City 5 0. Of course, that was. And we're also going to look ahead to what is going to be the last match of the season at the Emirates on Sunday when Leicester City are the visitors. So lots to get through. We'll have your questions and comments as well coming up. The other side of this. So, good evening. My name is Richard, as I said, and this is the Arsenal Women's Show on over and over and over again. It is, of course, one of the highlights of the week. I'm sure you all look forward to this show tonight. Lots and lots to get through. Greg says, evening all Friday fixes here. Indeed, it is, my friend. I'm glad you are well. Um, it's been a strange old week. I've been off work. I've had a few things going on. It's been quite hectic, um, but We've got through the week and uh, we're going to get through the Arsenal women's show. Now, of course, there's only one place we can really start, isn't it? Going back to last weekend and coming on the hot on the heels of the Arsenal men's really disappointing result against Aston Villa. We all needed some cheering up, didn't we? And thankfully, the girls, as they usually do, managed to find a way to bring a smile back to our face, didn't they? <laughs> So, yeah, good, um, a good victory. I know people will say, well, the league's over anyway. Well, yeah, it probably is, let's be honest. I mean, Chelsea won again in a week, didn't they? But um, we need to win all our games. We need to try and finish as high up the table as we can. And we got the job done in a very, very convincing way, which turned out to be our biggest WSL win of the season. Now, you may be wondering where um, our guests are. Well, um, we're just about to find out. Yeah. Hello, everybody. So first, let's look back on the last match against uh, Bristol City. And uh, I will uh, divide this into two parts, um, my match day impression and first uh, a few statistics. I've made a lot of notes as I can't be in the show. I think uh, yeah, I had to do uh, some yeah, some work um, to, be, uh, to have some interesting things for the show. So uh, Katie Reid is the 129th player for Arsenal in a competitive match since 2011. She came on against Bristol and gave her debut. And I think uh, yeah, it was, was a positive uh, appearance for her. Then uh, Caitlin Ford is the only player to have appeared in every match, in every WSL match this season. Uh, besides Caitlin, it's only Manu, Vicky and Lassie uh, who were in every matchday squad this season. But Caden is the only one who appeared in every match. Okay, so uh, Kim's passing accuracy in the Bristol game is very, very impressive. Uh, it was 99.3%. Only one pass out of 130 passes she made did not find an Arsenal player. <laughs> that's, that's brilliant, that's outstanding. And, it says all about uh, the importance of, of Kim for our match. Well, you see, look at that. I mean, Andreas can't be on the show because he is flying over to London, of course, for the game on Sunday. Um, and if he can't be here, he's never going to disappoint, is he? That is um, some fantastic stats there. We'll just run through them quickly then. So, Katie Reid, of course, made her debut, came on for Leah Williamson, two of the Arsenal Academy players, um, one replacing the other, the the the, the present and the future, I guess you could say. And and yes, she couldn't stop smiling, could she, young Katie? She was so delighted to have got that opportunity. Um, she's been training with the first team squad for quite some time now. And she finally got herself on the pitch. And, you know, she did OK, didn't she? It's a nice, it was a nice opportunity for it to come on, wasn't it? We're 5-0 up against Bristol City with, what, five minutes to go or whatever it was. A beautiful opportunity to get her on the pitch. And didn't she enjoy it? You know, one or two um, nice, simple little passes that she played. She made one little tackle as well, didn't she? And you could see how much it meant to her. Uh, and it was great as always, you know, when Leah came off for the, the way that Leah kind of greeted her and stuff like that was great. The way the crowd greeted her as well. 
fantastic. And, you know, I'm sure this is going to be the start of what hopefully will be a really um, long and successful um, career at Arsenal because, you know, we love our academy players that we coming through and getting in the first team and, and doing their stuff. And it's great that she's had that opportunity. Um, I'm sure she's still got a lot to learn and she's not going to have learned too much in five minutes against Bristol City when you're 5-0 up. But the experience that she's got, not only being on the pitch now, but training with the team for so long is um, is fantastic, isn't it? And I'm sure that's going to stand her in good stead going forward for um, the rest of her career. And hopefully between now and the end of the season, if the, if the game allows it, I'm sure she might get on and get a few more minutes as well. And of course, that's on the heels of, of course, um, um, Vivian Lear as well, who's come on a couple of times, hasn't she, this season as well. So, you know, some of these young academy players are getting minutes on the pitch and I think that's great. And that's what we're about as a club. That's what we've always been about. And, you know, we we enjoy that. We love that as fans, don't we? And you can see how much it meant to her. And the 129th player since the start of the WSL era um, to make their competitive debut. Well, who's going to be 130? Who'd be reckon is going to be 130? My, my guess will probably be a new signing that we make in the summer at the start of next season. But who knows? Maybe one of these other academy players might get through and, and get on the pitch between now and the end of the season. We'll see. But yeah, my guess would be 130th will be a new signing uh, that we make over the summer. Um, interesting as well there, wasn't it? Andrea said, Caitlin Ford is the only player to play every single WSL game this season. Wow. I mean, she hasn't started them all. We know that. She's come off the bench uh, on, on a couple of occasions, but she's been on the pitch in every single game. And that's quite an achievement, isn't it? You know, these days when it's a squad game, especially with the squad that we've got. But it shows, doesn't it? One, how much um, faith Jonas has in Caitlin Ford and also the impact that she's made in the games that she's played. And I, I think she has had um, a really uh, a good season. She really has had a good season. I thought she was great against Bristol City. She made a great impact, didn't she, in the cup final, setting up the goal um, for Steena and numerous other opportunities she created when she came on. And she played really well against Bristol City as well. Um, and yeah, I think that... Um, it's, it was a surprise when Andreas put that fact out. I was shocked a little bit. Is she the only one? that she actually even played in every game, but but I'm not going to question Andreas. Of course we're not. Um, but yeah, that's an incredible stat, isn't it? So well done to Caitlin. Can she complete the whole season with every single game? That we could win? It's usually Katie McCabe, isn't it, that does that. So it'd be nice to have someone else doing it for a change. Obviously, Katie McCabe and Mr... Missed the game this season. I don't know which game that was. Somewhere along the line, she must have done. Um, and of course, Steena was injured for one or two games, wasn't she? Um, and of course, you have a little interesting stat there. What a fantastic stat. Kim Little's passing, 99.3%. Wow. Um, incredible. I mean, she did get player of the match um, on the BBC, and I think probably rightly so. But it's almost, we almost take it for granted, don't we? Because it's almost like every time she plays, well, she just gets player of the match every game, player of the match when she plays, because she's just so influential and so important. But that passing stats there are incredible. 99.3% passing accuracy. And it's not like she just made 10 passes, over 100 and whatever it was, passes, Andrea said there, brilliant. You know what I mean? What a, what an amazing game that she's had and what an amazing career she's had and what an amazing player she is. We're so lucky to have, aren't we? And I think that, um, you know, we, we sometimes we think to ourselves, you know what, she's, you know, she's retired from international football. She's on, on obviously in the last few years of her career. There's no doubt about that. Age catches up with all of us. And, you know, we've got Vicky Pullover, we've got Kyra to play in that position now. And, and we think to ourselves, well, you know, Maybe we've got that transition, but then you see Kim produce a performance like that. And you're thinking, you know what? Um, when she does finally hang her boots up, she's going to be virtually impossible to replace, isn't she? Let's be honest. Um, but yeah, an incredible um, performance from her as well. Again, so we almost take those for granted now, don't we? That she's just going to turn those performances in um, week in, a week out. Terry says, Good evening, Richard Greg. I'm watching, uh, running late, just eating me dinner. Oh, good. Enjoy your dinner, my friend. I hope you're doing well. Um, LG says, Jonas out. Come on, we just want to cut, my friend. Come on, look. I mean, I'm not saying that necessarily Jonas is going to be the one to take us to this next level, which is obviously winning league titles and, and stuff like that. Um, but I think having won the Continental Cup now, two seasons running, and showing against the big teams that we've got the match of them in, in the game when we play them, yes, over a course of a season this year, we've been inconsistent. But I do feel as though with the players that um, we've got, the new players we've got coming in, obviously Emily Fox in particular, you know, Leia Cadena, um, obviously Lessie as well, settling into the team. I think next season, I, I'm not saying that I'm making excuses for Jonas. And I do feel as though, obviously, Beth's not been 100% fit all season. Viv's hardly played. Leah Williamson's only just really coming back now. Um, I do feel that those three players 
have not been at their best. And I think that that's uh, been a, a factor as well. But yeah, we need to get our consistency sorted out. And I, I'm, I'm prepared to give Jonas next season. And there's no excuses next season. We won't have these injury issues. Well, hopefully we won't have injury issues. Um, this team would have had a year together. Obviously, one or two new signings in the summer as well in certain areas of the team, a goalkeeper in particular. I think we all know that's what we need. Um, but I'm prepared to give him um, next season and see. And if next season it's no different, if next season all we do is come third and win the Conti Cup again, that's not enough. That's not enough progress. And then I would be maybe agreeing with you then. And then maybe next summer we have that conversation. Or maybe even before then, if next season doesn't start particularly well. I think the Champions League is important, isn't it? Because this season we didn't get through the qualifiers. And I do feel as though that's massively important next season. We have to be in the in the Champions League group stage. We have to qualify. Um, we've got to get third place, which I think we will now. Seems almost certain now, doesn't it? With that win that we had um, against Bristol City. So, uh, But we've got to get through those qualifiers. This, this time next year or in the summer. We've got to get through that. We've got to be in the Champions League and then let's see where we go. Let's see where we are. But I think he deserves a, at least another season, Jonas. He's won us two trophies in three seasons. He's had a runners-up position in the league as well. Just one point off of winning a title in his first season. So I don't think he's done a Champions League semi-final as well. So, you know, it's not a bad run, is it, in three seasons? So I, he definitely deserves another, another season with this team that he's put together. And... I'm prepared to give him that time. And I think he, he he's, he's earned that with the two trophies that he's won, the two cups that he's won, you know, and, and that's how I feel at this moment in time, whether I'll still feel like that midway through next season. If we start next season, as we started this season at the Champions League, lose a couple of silly games early on, then I might be tending to agree with you. Is he ever going to get it right? And I'd probably say, obviously not in those circumstances. But I say, I do think there's been... Slightly extenuating circumstances. This is unprepared to give him that benefit of the doubt because he's brought us trophies, two in a row, two in a row, and that's it's not easy to do, is it? When you're up against a team like Chelsea, you win so much. You know you've got Manchester City always there or thereabouts. Man United, the competition is is fierce, and we've come out two seasons running with a trophy. So um, it would seem it would seem very very harsh to get rid of him now especially if we do get third place, we seal that Champions League qualification place. Yeah, it, it, it deserves another season for me, but let's see where we are next year. Uh, Terry says, congrats to Steena on 100 caps for Sweden. Indeed, yeah, I mean, um, Steena never seems to get, does she, the credit that she deserves. She never gets the credit she deserves, I don't think, for what she's done um, in her career. And certainly not since she's come to Arsenal. She's been brilliant for us. She scored a lot of goals. She's that top scorer last season. She's our top scorer this season. And 100 caps for Sweden. What a career she's had. What a player she is. And I just hope and pray that she does sign a new contract at the end of the season and stays with us for longer because um, a player like that is difficult to replace. A goal scorer like that who scores goals in big games as well, they're difficult to replace. And it's so important, isn't it? Uh, Terry says, come on, LG, you don't spread Arteta like that. <laughs> yeah, we'll obviously be speaking about Arteta tomorrow night, I'm sure, at, at the Wolves game. Um, Greg says, Jonas has done well with six new players coming in. Most teams would make the excuse of going through a transition period, uh, but we still have done well. Yeah, I mean, I kind of agree. And I think as well, not only the new players, but the fact that I said Leah Williamson's only really just coming back now. Um, Beth's not been at her best this season. And obviously Viv. I mean, how many games has Viv played this season? I mean, she's only scored one goal. That tells you everything you need to know. But that, they're big misses as well, aren't they? So, come on, let, let's let's give him a bit more time. Uh, Hannah, Hannah says, Stina, Lena and Viv to leave the end of this summer. No, 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 don't say that. I mean, Lena, for whatever reason, it's not worked out for us. And apparently she's out, I think, probably for the rest of the season. It says personal issues was what Jonas said in his press conference, whatever that means. We wish her all the best, of course. It's not quite worked out for us. So I think if Lena was to leave at the end of the season, we'd totally understand that. No issue with that at all. Obviously, Steena and Viv, we want both of them to stay up. Of course, we do. They're great players. And if Viv gets herself back to full fitness, we know how good she can be. So, yeah, let's um, let's hope that um, certainly two of those three don't leave. Uh, and, you know, it'd be nice if Lena stays and gets herself fit and can start playing because I think we've seen glimpses here and there of what she's capable of. It's not quite worked for you, has it? So, um, but I agree with, with, with Greg, definitely. Yeah, we've got new players and, yeah, next season though, Greg, 
and LG and everyone else. There's no, for me, there's no excuse next season not for us to push on and really, if we don't win the league, certainly to take Chelsea or Man City, whoever it is, all the, all the way to the end. We've got to put in a much stronger challenge next season. We have to, and we have to win maybe more than just the Continental Cup. We're not to win the Continental Cup again, three in a row, but let's, let's go for the FA Cup. Let's, go deep into the Champions League. Let's really push that title next season. There's no excuse. We've got the biggest squad in the league. We've got the best squad probably in the country. Um, we've got one of the strongest squads in Europe and we need to really push on now. So, yeah, no more excuses. Jonas, we've, I've tried to stick up for you as much as possible this season, um, but um, there's no more excuses ne next season. You've got to deliver more uh, than what you've delivered so far. And you haven't done bad, but it's not quite... We're Arsenal. Let's, let's remember we're Arsenal. We're not some little tin pot club you know we are the biggest most successful uh, club in english women's football one of the biggest names in european women's football you know and and just the odd continental cup here and there is not enough is it you know, you know that so come on mate we'll we'll, we'll back you um next season but we're not going to be able to back you further than that if it doesn't work. OK, <laughs> so there we go. Um, now, I think Andreas has got a few more stats from the Bristol City game to bring us. These could be good, couldn't they? Uh, then we had uh, four goals uh, from uh, from English internationals, two from Beth, two from Lassie. Uh, Beth, uh, with, yeah, Beth's first goal, I would say, was Caitlin's goal. It was fantastic uh, what she she did from from the left wing and then she hit the post and uh, yeah Beth with an opportunist goal and uh, the goals from Lessie yeah well brilliant uh, coming out from outside the box and this shows uh, how good and effective she uh, is for us as a number 10 so it was a very dominant performance and uh, yeah finally we were clinical in front of goal yeah <laughs> Uh, we had 74 74% ball possession. Uh, we had 32 shots overall. Bristol had four. <laughs> we had 12 shots on goal. Bristol only one. We hit the post and we hit the crossbar. We had 892 passes and our passing accuracy was 91%. So what, what can you expect more from a match? And, yeah, and of course the goals were five for Arsenal and nil for Bristol. So that's uh, for the statistics. And uh, yeah, I'll be back with uh, my impressions from the match. See, I love a good statistic, me. I think statistics are great. Um, and that was obviously some more great statistics there. I just want to mention, actually, he did obviously mention the, the four goals scored by our two England players. Um, obviously, Lessie, you've seen the picture behind me, and of course, Beth. Good to see Beth get a couple of goals, wasn't it? Because she hasn't scored for a while, and I don't think she's been firing quite on, on all cylinders, unsurprisingly, with her injury. So it was nice to see her get those two goals. And they were two um, kind of quite similar goals in a way, wasn't they? Getting herself into those positions that she does so often, and it, they turn out to be simple finishes, but you've got to put yourself in those, those positions, haven't you, to get the goal? I mean, the first one, yeah, Caitlin Ford. Brilliant, wasn't it, from her down that left-hand side? We mentioned it just before. Um, she was unlucky, wasn't she? Hit the post and, you know, it, Steena had maybe overly anticipated getting across. It went behind her and, of course, Beth was there. And Beth doesn't miss there, does, does she? She scored a lot of goals like that. And that's the reason why you get in those positions, you score those goals. And her second goal was quite similar, really, wasn't it, uh, as well? And that's it. And I say, I think that's, that's going to have done her a world of good as well because, I say, she's been patchy form this season I think and we're not blaming her we're not singling her out we understand the problems of coming back from such a big injury especially the way that Beth plays the game she, she's a 100% player all the time isn't she she doesn't do anything um, by half measures you know she flies into tackle she's up and down the pitch she's always available wanting the ball she's just such a worker as well such a physical player and to have been out for so long and then to be able to get all of those aspects of your game firing at the same time as they were before her injury was always going to be a big ask. And I said it before, and I just think she started so well when she first came back, got a couple of goals, didn't she? Was it against West Ham and um, another game against, I can't remember it was now, she scored a goal, didn't she? Leicester, I think it might have been. And um, 
I think maybe we thought, oh, look, you know, the, the, the injury hasn't affected her too much. But I think inevitably it was always going to. And, you know, she struggled for consistency. She struggled to bring all those aspects of her game together. And I don't think we can be too surprised by that, can we? Because, um, you know, it was a long, long time to be out for, and I say, especially for the type of player that Beth is. So, you know, um, I'm sure next season she'll be much more, you know, with a pre-season and everything else to come, you know, rest in the summer as well with no Olympics for the Team GB. So I think that she's going to be back um, back to her best next season. If we see anywhere near the Beth Mead that we saw in 2022, then it's going to be um, it's going to be worth the wait, isn't it, to get her back to that form again. So, yeah, it's great for her. And, of course, what more can we say about Lessie? Her two goals were just... Um, both of those goals were brilliant, brilliant finishes, weren't they? The first one was a bit of a solo effort, wasn't it? Nice little run, made space for the shot and put it across the keeper into the far corner. And then, of course, the second goal, well made. It was a good move, Katie McCabe involved. And a first time finish this time. So she showed two different sides to her to her game there. And I think we've always been a little bit critical of, of Leslie for not getting in those positions, not scoring enough goals, maybe not taking enough shots from those sort of positions. So it was great that she did. She knows where the goal is. Um, Jonas has said she's the best finisher at, in the team. I still think maybe Steena is, but anyway, we'll give Jonas the benefit of the doubt. But those were two fantastic goals. And what's that, 12 for the season? And yes, and I think that that's, you know, there's still some games to come. She's going to get a few more, hopefully. But it's still, a, it's a decent return. It's not, it's not fantastic, is it? When so much emphasis is on the number nine position, if you like, that she's been keeping Steena out of the team for so long. But it's a decent first season and, you know, better than her goal returns in the previous seasons for Man United. So you can see she's growing as a player and, yeah, I'm sure she can push on from here. But I'm I'm satisfied, certainly, with that, with her first season um, with the team. And, and yeah, I'm sure I say things will go from um, strength to strength um, going forward. Oh, I've just forgotten to switch my thing on. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's, that's great for her as well, wasn't it? And, you know, uh, two... Great goals from her. But, yeah, I mean, in terms of the match statistics, I don't think there's too much of a surprise, is there? You know, we were playing a team at the bottom of the league at home at Meadow Park where we're so strong. Um, 12 shots on target, 32 efforts on goal. I mean, dominance, dominance, wasn't it? And 892 passes and 91% accuracy. That's incredible, is it? That's the whole team. The passing in that game was really good. And, yes, it's Bristol City and... We should be doing stats like that against a team like Bristol City. But you've still got to pull it off, haven't you? And we did. And we got the goals. And that's been a problem this season, hasn't it? Scoring goals, taking our chances. And um, we did it really, really clinically um, on Sunday, didn't we? And it was a good all-round performance. It really was. And, um, yeah, I'll always take a 1-0 win. I, I did say 5-0, actually, didn't I? My prediction was 5-0. So I actually got it spot on. So I was quite happy about that. I don't usually get me scores that 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 right but um i just had a feeling that having won the cup that the confidence would be buzzing and you know at home to the bottom of the league team we had a little bit of a break a lot of our players had played some good games for the international break and yeah it was a, maybe it came at a good time for us didn't it that, that game and we, we took um full advantage terry says let's hope Jonas plays steena and russo together more often and uh, they proved it does work yeah i mean i, I think maybe the issue with um frieda's uh, fitness made sure that that happened in this particular game. Um, we'll have, we'll talk about, obviously, the Leicester game and who may play and who may not play in that game. But, yeah, I would like to see them play more together going forward, definitely. And you can see it does work. Every time they play together, it, it's it's tended to be a good Arsenal result, hasn't it? You know, they both tend to score. one or If one of them doesn't score, the other one does. And, obviously, on Sunday, it was Leicester's chance to get the two goals. Steena quite often has got the goals when they played. The hat-trick against Aston Villa, for example, in the Cup. So, yeah. I'd like to see them play together more, and I'm sure we will. And hopefully going forward next season, assuming that Steena does sign a new contract, um, I'm sure they will play much more together. Um, and they can do, and it works. And, yeah, it's, it's exciting to see them play, isn't it? So we want to see more of that. Of course we do. And, of course, Andreas did say he was going to come back and give us his thoughts on the actual match itself after all those brilliant stats. So let's hear Andreas' thoughts, um, a little bit of his thoughts on the match. Yeah, the Bristol match, yeah, it was, of course, a very dominant performance. And um, what helps against such an opponent is uh, an early goal. And we were lucky uh, with the first goal from Beth. Uh, and then, yeah, pretty soon a second one, the third from from Steph, yeah, was unlucky for, for the Bristol goalkeeper. But uh, all in all, we really played well. That's important. The player of the match from the supporters club of Mido, 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's one of, it was a, a sympathy vote. Of course, she scored two goals. Uh, from BBC, it was uh, Kimi. Yeah, as I said, with uh, with the passing accuracy, fantastic match from Kimi again. For me, uh, yeah, I think it could have been Lotta again. It's uh, once again an outstanding performance from Lotta. The way she reads the game is really impressing. It prevents her from going into tackles. She's always standing right. And uh, more and more, uh, this reminds me of, on, yeah, on the best from, from Leo, from Leo Williams. It's, yeah, Lotta is growing from, from match to match and uh, she has a fantastic season. Uh, in, in the first half, from, in my uh, opinion, uh, we played too much over the left wing. Uh, the right wing was disregarded too often. Beth was too much in the box as a second number nine. Yeah, my impression. Uh, but uh, to say it uh, positive, the link up between Steph and Caitlin was great. And yeah, Caitlin had a fantastic match. And I read in uh, online from, from an Australian uh, journalist uh, that he is asking himself why is Caitlin Ford not considered when it's up to Ballon d'Or nominations. Yes, yes, why not? She's having a great season. Uh, yeah, she's playing fantastic for the Arsenal, uh, for Australia. Uh, she, she is more and more important now with uh, Sam Kerr missing. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not fair that she's, uh, she's ignored when, when it comes to lists for the Ballon d'Or. Caitlin, really, really great season and fantastic match against Bristol. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? I've never really thought about Caitlin Ford as a Ballon d'Or nominee, um, but I, I, I guess obviously an Australian journalist is going to have a slightly um, biased opinion of that, maybe. And I'm not saying that Caitlin doesn't deserve more recognition because I think she does. Um, I think a Ballon d'Or nomination may be slightly over the top, but um be great if she got one, obviously. And, um, you know, she is obviously a very good player. Um so there you go. But yeah, I mean, I think that um it was um it was a it was a good performance, wasn't it? And uh it, it was the early goal, as Andreas rightly said, makes a difference in any game, I think, especially when you've got a little bit of pressure. And you know, there is pressure on Arsenal every time we play, um, particularly when it comes to the fact that, you know, the, the league title campaign hasn't really gone as we wanted it to. So we have to win all our games now and finish strongly, don't we? So um, and against a team that's probably going to try and come and defend, which they were, to get that early goal made a massive difference, didn't it? And yeah, from that point onwards, it was always going to be a comfortable victory. Um, yeah, it was quite interesting, wasn't it? There, that um, it was uh, it was Mido that got the player of the match from the supporters club. I'm not saying Mido had a bad game because she didn't, as Andreas rightly said, she got two goals. But um, yeah, I don't think um, I never I never considered her as a possibility for the player of the match in this particular game, uh, even though she'd got those two goals, you know, um, obviously Kim Little was the was the favourite. I thought Vicky had a decent game again. Um, and of course, every week we are mentioning Lotta, aren't we, these days? Andreas has obviously mentioned her there quite rightly so. And yeah, she has developed into the complete, almost a complete defender. And yes, I know what people will say. She has still got a mistake in her um, every now and again. And we can't, deny that of course not but she's a central defender all central defenders are, are, are going to make mistakes here and there aren't they it's impossible not to you know we've seen Leah Williamson make some terrible mistakes you know we've seen Millie Bright make mistakes you know these are these are the best England players these are two of the best defenders in Europe they make mistakes so of course of course we're going to expect to see um lots of make a mistake here and there aren't we still but um she's improved massively our concentration level she's improved uh um, a reading of the game. And yeah, th there are certain aspects of her game now that you look at and you think you, she's clearly learned a lot from, from playing alongside Leah, from training with Leah, you know, the way that she brings the ball out of defence, I say the way she's anticipating um, the play and also as well a, a long range of passing as well is really, really good now, isn't it? The accuracy on those long passes, she can start attacks from the back. And I think when we haven't had Leah Williamson playing, which hasn't been for a long time this season, you know, Lotta really has stepped up. And now Leah's back. She's not dropped her level. She's still up there. She's one of the leaders in this team. And it's been great to see, isn't it? You know, um, to see her now with the confidence that she's got and 
yeah, it is brilliant. And she has she's gonna be up there, isn't she, when it comes to player of the season, and we'll be doing that on this show, of course. Um, once the season's over and done with, she's gonna be in with a shout of that particular uh, award, isn't she? There's no doubt. She's had a brilliant season. Um, there's a couple of other nominations as well, which we'll talk about obviously at the time. But yeah, Lotta's up there and she's had a great season, and yeah. She was great again. It's almost, again, you know, it's funny, isn't it? Some of the, the players we look at and you think, oh, yeah, they had a great game. And it's like, well, we almost just expect that to be the case because they have great games virtually every week now, don't they? These, these same players, Kim, obviously, Lotta, um, you know, Lessie. Uh, we know they're going to be on top of the game. Vicky. And it's like, OK, yeah, Emily Fox now as well is, is another one. So, yeah, um, but that was, it was um, I kind of agree with Andreas about the left, the left wing side. Everything seemed to come down the left, didn't it? In, that, in the Bristol game, especially in that first half. And um, it was no surprise that when Mido got her goals, it was because she was more in a central position because it was pointless her staying out wide because the ball wasn't coming out there. Um, and that's usually where we're strong, isn't it? That link up between Emily Fox and Mido has been has been really, really good, hasn't it? So. I'm a little bit surprised that um, maybe we've not used, we didn't use that a bit more, but it didn't matter, did it? Because we won the game comfortably. We created lots and lots of chances. Um, and yes, Caitlin obviously had a really, really good game. But Ballon d'Or for Caitlin Fold, I'm not sure about that. We love Caitlin, but um, I'm not sure if uh, if a Ballon d'Or nomination is maybe um, where she is. Uh, Terry says, if Mido can't win it, there's no way they're going to give it to uh, another Arsenal player. Well, no, exactly. Yeah, I think that's that's a point, isn't it? You're right. Obviously, about the Ballon d'Or, um, Mido should have won it the year before, shouldn't she? When we won the Euros, you know, she was player of the tournament in the Euros. She was top scorer in the Euros at the time as well. She was literally playing magnificent for Arsenal. Uh, you know, we were doing well in the Champions League that year as well, and. Yeah, I don't know how she never won that. I'll never understand, but you're absolutely right. If Mido playing like that on the biggest stages of all isn't going to get, um, an, uh, isn't going to win the Ballon d'Or, then obviously Caitlin Ford's never going to win it. But this was more about just getting nominated, I suppose. But I'm not even quite sure if, if Caitlin Ford is at that level um, to be nominated. I mean, I say we love her, but yeah, come on, let's let's keep our feet on the ground a little bit. You know, she's had some good performances for Arsenal, scores goals, but. Um, no, I don't quite think she's at that Mido level, is she? Or what the level that Mido was at at that particular time. Uh, Terry says, loving lots of Ruben Moy, um, who don't make mistakes. She's been my player of the season so far. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she's definitely up there, isn't she? She's going to get a lot of votes, I'm sure, when it comes to that particular award uh, when we do it at the end of the season. But yeah, um, she has been fantastic. What a, And I say last season as well. It's just a push on from there, really, hasn't she? And that's great to see. And, yeah, let's hope that we see a lot more great performances from Lotta, not only this season, but, of course, um, going forward as well. Now, before we leave the Bristol match, um, uh, Andreas has got uh, a few more thoughts to share with us. Uh, Vicky Pelova. <laughs> what, what can I say about her? It's, yeah, she's yeah, undroppable in this team. It's fantastic, uh, her work rate and, and what... What she is doing with the ball, she never loses the ball. She wins uh, the ball back. It's it's great. And sometimes uh, I think she's like a young version uh, of yeah a mixture from Kim and Katie. The fighting spirit, the emotions from from Katie and uh, yeah and uh, the ball possession and and uh, yeah what she's doing in midfield. It's you know, really like a young Kim. I think it's fantastic to have her in the team. Uh, yeah, Emily Fox, <laughs> what a signing. She's here for three and a half months and she has adapted so well to a new country, a new league, a new club, new teammates. Uh, yeah, she's playing as if she's not only three and a half months here, uh, but uh, more than three and a half years. It's just great and, as I said, what a signing for us. And uh, finally, Lassie. Yeah. <laughs> I, I once called her a workhorse and on, on last Sunday, this was my impression again. It's unbelievable how she works for the team. And, uh, yeah, she's, she's fantastic in this, in this offensive midfield role. And I love her in this role. And, uh, I was so happy for her that she scored twice because, uh, everybody's expecting goals from her. But in this role, it's not her first task to score goals but if she does of course it helps her for the self-confidence and uh, yeah she had a great match and uh, once again she's fantastic signing great player for us 
So, yeah, all in all, what a deserved win, 5-0, finally, we were clinically in front of goal and we scored a few goals, so, yeah, of course, the atmosphere in Meadow Park was great again, I love it to be there, and, yeah, it was good. Yeah, of course. I mean, everyone loves uh, Meadow Park, but I worry that uh, we are outgrowing that stadium, aren't we? Um, it's difficult to get tickets now. And as we're going to find out again on uh, on Sunday at the Emirates, um, we're selling out, or well, not selling out, but we're selling a lot of tickets, even for games against teams like Leicester. No disrespect to Leicester, but um, we'll talk about that obviously in a minute as well. Um, Terry says, Palova, what a player she has turned out to be. My only criticism is she doesn't score enough. No, she doesn't, but then it's not really her job, is it? She's not the the more attacking of the midfield, is she really? So I suppose, you know, she's doing a great job in winning the ball. That's her main role, isn't it? You know, her passing. She's got, she has got a little bit of everything, hasn't she? Um, and I even think she's got a little bit of that Dutch kind of um, uh, skills as well, hasn't she? You see her sometimes, you know, the way she takes players on. And yeah, it'd be nice for her to score more goals. Absolutely, it would. And we've seen some of her shooting. It hasn't always been great, has it? But she's got a couple of goals recently. Um, and yeah, you know, we talked about Lotta as a player of the season. I think, you know, we've got to mention Vicky in that in that as well, haven't we? I think she definitely deserves a big mention for that. She's been so consistent this season. Um, you know, and, and the fact that, uh, you know, we've had, obviously, Kim's been generally fit. Obviously, I know Leah Volt is out at the minute, but to have that kind of competition, that level of player, and she's still playing nearly every single game, just goes to show how important that she's been. And I just hope that she isn't having a... Um, a Frieda Marnham season, if you like, from last season, where Frieda was brilliant, wasn't able to push on this season as much. Her form's been a little bit patchy. Let's hope that next season Vicky can push on even more. And that this isn't a one-off season. I'm sure it won't be because she's still young and, and improving. Um, but yeah, she's been brilliant, hasn't she? And once again, um, she just dominates the midfield every single game she plays. She just dominates. And yeah, I mean, Emily Fox, we've, we've mentioned her quite a lot already on the show since she's joined us. And yeah, what a brilliant signing she's proving to be. Um, and yes, I mean, it's um, it's looking good, isn't it? When you look at through the squad now, the depth that we've got in so many different positions and um, Emily Fox has just added to that as well, hasn't she? And I suppose it's strange, isn't it? You know, that obviously Laura Veenwriter came back from her long injury on Sunday, came on, didn't she? Uh, replaced Emily Fox. And it's like before she got injured, Laura... She had done so well at that right back position. It was almost like we thought, well, she's now the first choice right back. You know, she was brilliant, wasn't she? Getting up and down that wing and, um, you know, contributing so much. Um, and of course, unfortunately for her, she got injured at a bad time. And, you know, we've brought in Emily Fox now and you have to look at it and you have to say, well, Laura now is going to have to really fight for minutes on the pitch because Emily Fox is almost undroppable now, isn't she? So, um, it's good to have that competition, though, isn't it? It is good to have that competition. I mean, I thought Laura looked a little bit rusty at times on the ball and, you know, not surprising she's been out for so long. But it was great to see her back on the pitch. Another player who couldn't stop smiling as well, which is great to see, isn't it? Um, and, yeah, I'm sure she's just going to get stronger and stronger here uh, and moving forward. And I say it was just great to see her back. Uh, so that's all our ACL crew um, are now back playing. I know at the minute, obviously, Viv's out injured and... You know, but uh, we'll talk about the Leicester game where she may be involved. We'll see. Um, Hada Hada says, uh, Atada Bon Matty to Arsenal. Where would she fit in, though? Obviously, she's a fantastic player. Um, is that really a position that we're struggling in? I don't know. I, I, we'll see. But yeah, she, she's a fantastic player. Uh, Terry says, if she can bring goals into her game, everyone in world football will want her. Yeah, uh, obviously, yeah, that's true. Any midfield player that scores goals is worth their weight in gold, aren't they? But Vicky brings so much more, well, not more than that, but she brings so much to the to the team that almost the goals don't matter with her, I don't think. You know, when you look at the forward players that we've got, um, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, if she could score five or six, seven goals a season. She reminds me a little bit, and I know she's a totally different type of player, but she's almost like the women's version of Granite Xhaka. And if you've been for many seasons, he didn't really score that many goals, did he? He'd get maybe three or four a season, you know, similar to the numbers that Vicky's getting, you know, the ball winner in the midfield, um, likes a yellow card here and there. Um, and of course, in Xhaka's last season with the men's team, he scored, what, nine goals. He slightly changed his position in the team and got more goals. And, you know, maybe Vicky can go on and get that sort of numbers. That'd be great, wouldn't it? But I like the job she's doing. I love the job she's doing in midfield. You know, her performance in that cup final against Chelsea was just 
different level, wasn't it? The way she was bullying the Chelsea midfield all over the pitch. You know, Erin Cuthbert was a tough cookie and she was just smashing it all over the place. So, yeah, um, Vicky's brilliant and what an amazing player she is. Um, but, yeah, so Bristol City, well and truly beaten. Um, and it was an Arsenal team that you saw that, one, were looking um, refreshed, looking confident maybe winning a cup and beating Chelsea in that final really gave us all a lift and yeah um I feel confident now that we can go and have a good finish to the season which is all we can do you know we can't look back on the games that we lost and think well what what if what if we can't change that now, all we can do is look to the future look ahead the next few games that have finished this season well four or five games we've got left win all them uh, make sure we've got that third place as a minimum and then um, regroup um, for next season. That's what we need to do, don't we? Um, Terry says, uh, did you see the Salty interview? Uh, Salty smile, but then the interviewer says, uh, pardon, you need um, some clean... I don't understand that. Anyway, um, was that after the midweek game? I didn't, I've not seen any interview. I saw, obviously, the interview she gave sort of an apology was it an apology um last week when she thought she was eric Cantona with the kind of poetry quotes and stuff like that I, I just think she's lost the plot a little bit poor old emma um but um we'll i will probably miss her won't we we'll probably miss her in a way um in some ways we'll miss her won't we the, the rivalry maybe with her but anyway um i think it's going to lead to a very very um, difficult season for chelsea next year whatever manager they get in they're going to be totally different to Emma. And these players have, have got used to Emma. And, you know, they've won trophies under Emma. And I think Chelsea are going to maybe find it difficult next season. It's, it's an opportunity for us, isn't it, to really push that home. And Man City will be feeling the same as well, I'm sure. Um, but we've got an opportunity next year, haven't we? But let's see. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we, we'll, I think we'll, we'll miss Emma a little bit, won't we? I'm sure we will. Um, so, Bristol City then, yes, nice, a good, comfortable victory. Of course, it was great for Andreas at Meadow Park. We did, of course, get him on the show, didn't we, at half-time in the game. Um, he couldn't hear us, unfortunately, because there was some loud music going on. Um, but it was good to see him. And, of course, he'll be at the uh, Emirates on Sunday, which we might as well look ahead to another important game coming up at the weekend. <laughs> So back home at the Emirates, it's become home now, hasn't it? Um, certainly this season, you can see the difference. And I think maybe that Wolfsburg game last season was the turning point, wasn't it, for the Emirates? Um, before that, we had sort of, we'd done OK on a couple of games. We had some big crowds, some of the other games not so big. And it was maybe we were going through that little transition. But now this season, um, every game has been a fantastic crowd. And I think the game on Sunday is the, is the final kind of test, really, to show exactly where we are with it all. You know, it hasn't maybe been, it wasn't part of that season deal because it was an extra game thrown in. And it hasn't been maybe pushed as quite as much as some of the previous ones. And we've already sold over 40,000 tickets. It's just, that is incredible, isn't it? Really, really is incredible. And it just goes to show, doesn't it, that we are, um, our fans are just the, the best in, in, in the country. Best in Europe. I think the best in women's football ever. It's amazing, isn't it, the support that we've got now. And I say, you think back to, I was at games at the Emirates for the women. There was 5,000 people. Um, now, minimum is like going to be 45,000, it seems, doesn't it now? Incredible. And yes, it, it will be a shame when we have outgrown Meadow Park. We maybe have already. It's a shame because Meadow Park has always been a fantastic venue for the Arsenal women's team. It always has been. Um, and again, you know, we were there when there was two, 300 people. Um, and now you struggle to get tickets because it's sold out every game. And I say we, we're doing this job at the Emirates as well. It's it's great to see the growth, and it's what we've been we've been trying to push for, you know, on this channel, and we've been trying to push for it anyway. But um, it's made it more difficult to get tickets, and it might mean that we end up never being able to play at Meadow Park again, and that would be a real shame, wouldn't it? Because it is a lovely venue. It's been a great home for for our team for such a long time. So many great memories, I'm sure we've all got um, from Meadow Park, and yeah, it'll be. It won't be quite like leaving Highbury for in the men's team, but it will certainly be a sad moment when we do finally uh, leave Meadow Park behind and and move to the Emirates on a permanent basis. And 
yeah, I'm not looking forward to that day, maybe, but um, it's inevitable it's going to happen and it's going to happen very, very soon. We cannot continue to play in a 4,000 capacity stadium when we can sell over 40,000 for a game against Leicester, which we, we can't win the league. We've got very little now to play for and we're still selling over 40,000 tickets for a Leicester game. I mean, it just goes to show, doesn't it, that we have outgrown, unfortunately. Meadow Park, which has been our home for so long, it is a shame, but there you go. Um, Greg says, 40,000 tickets sold already. Not bad considering there's a park run uh, going on in London. It's a little bit more than a park run, isn't it? <laughs> it's a slightly bigger event than a park run. But no, it is incredible, isn't it? I, I, I've forgotten about that. Of course, the London Marathon um, taking place, of course, this weekend. A lot of people, obviously, will be there watching that, will be taking part in that. Um, and Arsenal are still selling 40,000 for Leicester, a game against Leicester. This isn't playing Chelsea or a Manchester City or a Tottenham or a European Champions League game. No, it's, it is Leicester. And no disrespect to Leicester, they are not the biggest draw, are they, in WSL? It was a great game. We played against them, didn't we, away? We won 6 2, but um, they're not a, a big draw. And I was actually. When they announced that this game was going to be an extra game at the Emirates, I was thinking to myself, mm, is that really a wise decision for a game against Leicester when, yes, if we were still going for the league title, you could maybe think no problem. But um, I don't know. I was expecting a little bit of a disappointing crowd, maybe 20,000 or something like that. So to a sold 40,000 is absolutely amazing. And I think now there's no doubt, is there? None of us can have any doubts whatsoever that um, we cannot sustain playing at Meadow Park much longer. It, it, we can't. I'm not sure. I, I, I thought that the agreement we had with Boreham Wood to play there um, expired this year, 2024, but I don't think it does. I think it might be next year. Um, but whenever that runs out, I'm fairly certain that um, we won't be playing there again. And I think we'll be playing at the Emirates on a permanent basis. And, th and this team deserves to. The, the club deserves that, don't they? Everyone involved in the women's team the fans, the staff, the players, everybody deserves it. And, you know, the people behind the scenes that have done all the promotion work of it all, they deserve that. They deserve to be playing in those, in their stadium in front of these sort of crowds on a regular basis, every single game in going forward. They do deserve it, don't they? So um, it'll be sad, obviously, in a lot of ways, but it'll be massive for, for the club to move forward. Uh, you know, it's funny, isn't it? I, I saw... Um, I saw an advert on social media. Chelsea were promoting their Champions League game against is it Barcelona, isn't it? Um, and they'd sold like 20,000 tickets at Stamford Bridge and they were jumping about um, for a Champions League semi-final. You know, we we sold out 60,000 for our Champions League semi-final last season. We sold 40,000 against Leicester. They can't even sell more than 20,000 against Barcelona. So, you know, that's where we are as a club. So, yes, it, it's fantastic. But, yeah, the demands are there, aren't they, for success now? We can't not do it. Uh, Terry says, good old Arsenal get knocked out by Bayern and they bring out new clobber the next day to make us feel better. Yeah, I mean, they're shameless, aren't they? Let's be honest. Um, and it's almost like, and I don't know if, if it's necessarily the facts. I don't know for certain. I just look at it and think to myself, there must be a different kind of social media team um, in charge of the women's content and the men's kind of content. All the men's content seems to be is is pushing out new stuff. Like you said, new clobber, new gear, new new stuff to buy, 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 buy. Whereas the women's stuff seems to be a lot more... Yes, they, they do that as well. I'm not saying they don't do it, but they, it's certainly not the focus, is it? It seems like it's more about the actual team and the game and stuff like that, which is how it should be. The men's team, the men's club now is all about money all about merchandise and it's not what it, how it should be for me that that obviously it's important you need to sell merchandise and whatever but the games the players everything else the fans themselves that's what's important is it that's what drives football forward not merchandise not what shirt you wear um it that's not what it's about is it and so he says the girls must be uh, losing fortunes playing at Bournemouth. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they must be. Yeah, and it's not, isn't it? It's, it's about the growth of the team and, and everything else, isn't it? The, the, the team will never grow if we're playing at Meadow Park and no one can get tickets because it's sold out every game. You're not going to grow your new audience, are you? So um, it is sad, but but it has to happen. Greg says we need to be playing at the Emirates. Uh, we've got the support. We're the best supported team in the country. We're the best. We're pretty much the best supported team in women's football in the world, I think. Um, to sell out the games that we've sold out, I mean. 
Forty thousand against Leicester. Come on, that is, and it, it's going to be more than that in the end. You know, there'll be more tickets sold between now and Sunday. Absolutely, there will. You know what I mean? If we get, if we was to get forty-five thousand for a game against Leicester, I think that then that ends it right there, and then we are the best supported team in the world. There's no question, and the serious decisions are going to have to be made, aren't they, about the Emirates? It's going to have to happen, and I think it's the right. It will be the right decision, not only for for this team, but for the club going forward. And for women's football. Um, and I don't just think at Arsenal, I think it has to happen everywhere. You know, Viv uh, Miedema has been very strong in saying that, you know, it shouldn't be called the men's stadium. It should be called the club stadium. It's what it is. And all of the club's teams should play there. Yeah, okay, maybe not your under-21s or whatever, but that they need to play at Borough or whatever it is. But certainly the women's and the men's team should play in the one stadium. Absolutely, they should. And she's right, it's the club stadium. And it should be the same across all women's football. All the teams that's got, a, whether it's a Premier League team, a Championship team, whatever it is, um, the women's team should play at that stadium. That should be their home. And at the moment, for a lot of clubs, it's not going to work because they won't have the support and it costs too much money to play, uh, open a big stadium. But that's got to be the aim going forward. And eventually we need to get to that point. And Arsenal leading the way. And I think once we move to the Emirates permanently, I think it will start the it will start the process of other, particularly the other WSL teams doing the same. You know, um, Tottenham have played games at the London, uh, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. West Ham will be, probably be next ones as well. Aston Villa play at Villa Park quite a bit. Chelsea is starting to play more at Stamford Bridge. I think when Emma goes, they'll play there more because she's never really liked playing there. Um, obviously, Man United at Old Trafford makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, Man City's ground is a bit strange because it's next door to the Etihad, isn't it? They've built that stadium especially, so they may well stay there. Um, but yeah, that's where it's going to go, and it's the right it's the right thing, isn't it? Um, anyway, of course. Um, Andreas is looking forward to the Leicester game because at this moment in time, as we're speaking, he's above us in the air somewhere flying to London. So he's looking forward to it. Let's get some thoughts from Andreas ahead of the game against Leicester. Next match for us, uh, Sunday at home versus Leicester at the Emirates. And uh, of course, I'll be there. That's the reason why I can't be in the show tonight, because I'll take the late flight uh, once again on Friday evening. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the last Emirates match in this season uh, so far. Uh, 40,000 tickets are sold and this without uh, promoting it or, or yeah, making big advertisements uh, like for the United match or for the Spurs match. Uh, yeah, Leicester is ninth, uh, ninth position in the table. And uh, as I said, we, we haven't done any promotion, any special promotion for this match. And then having sold 40,000 tickets is fantastic. I hope we'll have uh, about 45,000 or so and a fantastic atmosphere. It's our home and yeah, the girls love to play there in front of a big crowd. They deserve this and um, I'm really looking forward to this match. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, we, we kind of just said it, didn't we? They do deserve, they do deserve it. And yeah, it, it's fantastic. And yeah, to, to have sold that number of tickets for this game is just mind blowing. It really is mind blowing. So yeah, well done to everybody that's been involved in that. You know, if you're going on Sunday, um, enjoy the game uh, first of all. And if you see Andreas, uh, say hello as well. I'm sure you will. Um, people have been doing that already. Um, Greg says there. Shout out to the under 21 women winning their league. Indeed, yes. You see, it just goes to show, doesn't it? You know, the club are going in the right direction from top to bottom. That's what it's about, isn't it? You know, you need your development teams, you need your, your youth teams to be doing well because if they're doing well, the players that they've got are going to be able to develop. And whether they all get in the first team, no, of course, they're not all going to get in the first team, are they? But if, if they don't, they move on, they make the club money, they become assets, don't they, to the club? And that's what it's about. That's what the youth system's about, isn't it? So, um, yeah, well done to them. And maybe we might see a few more of those coming through into the first team, mightn't we, at some point, which would be great. I say we love, we do love our homegrown players, don't we, at Arsenal? It's just part of our DNA of the clubs, what we're about. So, yeah, um, well done to them. But, yeah, no, I mean, um, obviously, um, 
as we've said, the, the, the crowd is 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 incredible. The support that we've got, and there's no there's no question in my mind that one of the reasons why we won that cup final the other week against Chelsea was simply the fact that the number of fans that we had. It almost felt like, didn't it, in the second half of the game and in the second half of extra time when we were attacking that end where we were, it almost felt like the crowd were like going to suck the ball in the net. You know what I mean? That's that's what it felt like. And the players must have felt it on the pitch. They must have got energy from that. And I just think that's been the case all season. You know, the fans have been incredible. You know, we've travelled to away games in large numbers. We're selling tickets at the Emirates. We're selling out Boreham Wood every week. It's incredible. It really is incredible. And and you think the team hasn't really had that much success yet. This team hasn't really had that much success yet. Two um, uh, Continental Cups. Imagine when we start winning league titles. Imagine when we start doing well in the Champions League on a consistent basis. Imagine when we are challenging every year for big honours. It's just going to be incredible, isn't it? Everything's there at this club right now. Everything is in place, isn't it? And it's just now getting that next stage done on the pitch. And that's Joe. That's his job to sort that out, isn't it, for the next season? But we'll see. But yeah, um, really, really um, exciting times now. And it's exciting times to come, isn't it? And it's great to be a part of this team and this club right at this moment in time. You know, we've, we've had some... We've had some great moments, haven't we, um, as supporting this Arsenal women's team over the years, you know, league titles, quadruples, you know, UEFA women's cups, all this kind of stuff, right? And we've enjoyed some great moments. But, you know, the game was very, very small then, wasn't it, really? The competition wasn't um, wasn't anywhere near as strong as it is now. And it doesn't take anything away from all those great trophies that we won because they were difficult to win and we were brilliant. We had a, such a fantastic team. But now with the crowd that we've got, with the way women's football's growing, if we can now go into an era of real success as well, league titles again, all that kind of stuff that we enjoyed before, anywhere near that now in, in the, at this time with the money now that's in women's football, with the way it's improved, that really would be incredible. That would be incredible. Wouldn't it? it would be the next, it's the next level up. Um, and that's where we're heading, I believe that's where we're heading. So, yeah, exciting, exciting times. Um, anyway, and that's got some more thoughts on the upcoming game on the weekend. So, uh, what about uh, Leicester? As I said, ninth position in the table. They can't be relegated. They can't reach the Champions League. So, uh, yeah, they're out uh, in FA Cup. Their season is, is over. So, well, uh, and... How did they play in, in the second half of the season? Their last win in the WSL was on 18th February, a 5-2 versus Bristol. They lost 5, drew 1 and won only two matches in 2024 in the WSL. But yeah, City only won 2-0 at home in February and both goals uh, came after the 80th minute. So be careful and don't underestimate Leicester. Uh, yeah, most dangerous player is, I think, Jutta Rantala, the Finnish international. Uh, as far as I know, she's their best goal scorer. And uh, of course, they will play a low block. What's, uh, <laughs> we had a lot of problems with this um, style of play. And uh, they will try to hurt us with counter attacks, probably about uh, probably about the uh, Nuta Rantala. So take care of her, keep her silent, be concentrated, don't underestimate Leicester. Then normally we should win. And my predicted lineup and goal prediction will follow soon. Yeah, I mean, obviously Leicester are gonna play a low block. They're not going to open up against us at the Emirates with that big pitch because we will just rip them to pieces. I mean, it was a strange game, wasn't it? The away game where Leicester were tuning up at half time and it was looking really, really bad, wasn't it? And that second half comeback was incredible. That's one of the best 45 minutes of football I've ever seen. The way we just ripped them to pieces that second half and got some great goals on 1-6-2 um, with six different goal scorers as well. Um, and we've got a great record, haven't we, against Leicester since they got promoted to the WSL. We've won every game. We've won every game pretty comfortably as well. Um, I'm not expecting anything different. But, yeah, I mean, um, it'd be interesting because they just lost, didn't they, in the FA Cup last week in the semi-final. So they're going to be suffering a bit of a hangover from that, you think, as well. It's not ideal for them, is it, coming to the Emirates in their next game? Um, and, 
yeah, you would imagine that um, we, we'll win the game reasonably comfortably, I suppose. Um, obviously, Andreas is going to give us his um, his team lineup and his score prediction in a minute. Greg says, can't wait to hear Andreas' half-time score. Well, well, we'll see what he says. He, he may be more optimistic this week. Uh, Terry says, I'm looking at us smashing Leicester on Sunday, double figures at least. I don't know about double figures. Um, I mean, in terms of the team then, I mean, um, it's there doesn't seem to be too many... Sort of, I don't think there'll be too many changes really to the team that, that played. Katie McCabe might well be back in the starting lineup. She was rested, of course, last week. Um, she came on in the second half. Um, I think. Um, see, I, I would probably stick with Sabrina in goal if it was me, uh, just simply because um, she didn't have a lot to do last week, did she? And it'd be nice to give her a game. And she, I'm not saying she's going to have a load to do against a Leicester team that probably are going to come for a draw. But um, I'd like to see Sabrina given another game, if I'm honest. So I would maybe stick with her. Obviously, Emily Fox, um, Lotta and Leah. And I, say, I think Katie McKay will probably come back in at left back. I think the Emirates maybe suits her. Uh, better in that position than Steph, maybe slightly. So I would maybe go with Katie McCabe. Um, in midfield, obviously, Leah Volti's out for the season. We're hearing, although the injury's not as bad as we feared. So that's good news, but she probably won't play again this season. So you'd imagine it'll be Kimmy and Vicky Palova in that kind of uh, the holding positions, you would imagine. Um, then ahead of them, Probably Leslie Russo. Um, we're hearing, I mean, I think um, Frida's been training, actually, which is great news. I saw some pictures of Frida Marnham training this week. Fantastic. Incredible, actually, when, you know, those of us that were at Wolves and saw what happened, um, it's incredible to see her training. I don't think she's going to be ready to start the game. I don't even think she'll be ready to be in the squad on the bench even this week. Um, let's hope. She's back soon, but I think this week maybe a little bit too soon. So I'm not expecting her to be to be in the squad. So I would stick with Russo there, of course, Leslie in that number ten position, and then the uh, the, the the two just ahead of her. We've got options, haven't we? I, I'd like to see Chloe Lacasse start in this game, maybe in place of Beth Mead. I know she scored two last week, and she does have a great record at the Emirates. But I would maybe go Chloe Lacasse on the right, um, Caitlin Ford on the left. Um, and of course, who else? Stina Black Stenius at number nine. Of course, I'm sure she will be. So that's the team I would pick. I've got a feeling Beth will probably start. And I I'm not saying I don't want her to start. I just feel it'd be nice for Chloe Lacasse. She had a couple of good games at the Emirates this season. It'd be nice to see her um, getting a getting a game, getting a start. Um, and I say Beth maybe having a having a little rest. I'm sure she'll come on and do well. Um, Terry says that even Andreas didn't look like. He convinced himself it was going to be tight. He, he, like, he was trying to convince himself, isn't he? He's trying to convince himself it's going to be a tight game. Um, but anyway, Terry so said, I've got a feeling Lotta scores a brace this Sunday. Well, maybe. Uh, Greg says, Le yeah, see, Leah to score would be good, wouldn't it? Because Leah hasn't scored yet this season, actually, since she's come back. It'd be nice for her to get a goal, wouldn't it, at the Emirates as well. That would be brilliant, actually. Uh, Terry says, and that's before... We scored the other nine. <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Should we listen? Should we see then what Andreas' score prediction is? Shall we see what uh, see what he's gonna uh, see what he's gonna say about the uh, the game? Yeah, how will we uh, line up on Sunday? Uh, I think Manu will be back in goal. Then uh, the defense will be Emily, Lotta, Leah, and Katie. I think she will be back in midfield. <laughs> you can't drop Kimmy. You can't drop Vic. <laughs> and uh, I hope that uh, Jonas saw uh, how good Lassie works as a number 10 and brings her on in this role again. And then the, the attacking uh, three will be Caitlin, Stina, I think, uh, and uh, probably Beth again. Yeah, she's got two goals, so he, he won't drop her. Uh, we are a bit short in defense if Leia Corina is Still out. I don't know whether it's it's uh, yeah something serious. Uh, I read that it's uh, it was only precaution that she was subbed off or didn't play for Spain. But uh, last last Sunday she wasn't in the squad, so hopefully she's back. Uh, yeah, I hope we can give uh, Laura minutes again. Yeah, I <laughs> remember uh, I remember when when she was warming up against Bristol and then when she was subbed in in 81st minute uh, 
she got standing ovations from from the whole meadow park um, and uh, the whole crowd was chanting her name uh, fantastic even i had goosebumps and i think for laura it must have been a fantastic moment to be back after 11 and a half months and and yeah and be welcomed from the fans in this way so yeah if if the match against leicester makes it possible to give her minutes uh, it would be great because uh, I'm very, very happy to have our tiny tank back. <laughs> tiny tank, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, his team wasn't that different to mine, actually, was it? Um, obviously, he would maybe go with Manu in goal, but I, I would stick with Sabrina. Um, and he's obviously kept Beth in the team, and uh, that wouldn't be a surprise, would it? Like he said, she scored two goals. Will. Um, will Jonas leave her out of the team or rest her? I'm not sure. But I, I just want to see Chloe Lacasse playing. And I just felt out of the two wide players last weekend, obviously Caitlin was the one that had the better game, although Beth scored the goals. So you wouldn't want to leave her out, would you? And I think Chloe deserves a start, that's all. But yeah, very similar team to what I predicted. So yeah, I, I don't think it'll be too different, will it? Um, in terms of Leia Cadena, we're hearing that she's fit. Um, obviously, she's not going to probably start the game, but I think she might well be in the squad. I think Kyra is going to be back in the squad as well, so that'll be good news. Um, and uh, yeah, um, and even Viv Miedemar, apparently, I think there was still uh, two training sessions left when Jonas gave his press conference today, but um, he said that she's got a chance, a chance, Viv Miedemar to be back. So it's good that obviously we've seen her training anyway, we've seen her in training, so we know she's back. Certainly training at least anyway. So that's good news, isn't it? And let's hope she can play some part um, in the squad at least um, on uh, on Sunday and, of course, going forward for the rest of the season. We want to see a fit Viv Miedemar next season, don't we? And again, like, like Beth, I think having a pre-season in the summer is going to be a massive help, isn't it? And let's hope that um, we can see the old... Beth and the old Viv next season, can't we? But yeah, she may well be in the squad on Sunday. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? The final game at the Emirates to see Viv back. Of course, it was on that pitch where she suffered that injury, of course, wasn't it? As did Beth, of course, um, as we know. And Laura, actually. It was all at the Emirates. Well, it was only Leah Williamson's one, wasn't it? That was at um, Lee Sportswich, Man United. But, um, but yeah, anyway, Andres didn't give us his score prediction, did he? So let's get the score prediction then, shall we? What's it going to be? Is he going to be optimistic like Terry and Greg? Or is he going to be... Is it going to be more like an Andreas normal prediction or is he confident this week? Let's find out. Um, yeah, in midfield also, yeah, <laughs> a bit short. Uh, it depends uh, whether Cairo is back. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I always say I want, I want Cairo playing. Yeah, and I really love the way she plays. Um, she was not in the squad, um, yeah, a minor injury or something like that. So hopefully she's back and maybe she can uh, come in in second half. And uh, yeah, let's see what it, what's uh, the situation with Frida. She was in the stands last Sunday, and, and also she she got her chance. Uh, Frida Manum, Frida Manum, and Norwegian flags everywhere. Would be great if she's in the squad again. I don't think that she will be available to play. But anyway, <laughs> the best the best news is so far that that there is no cardiac problem and she she's monitored and she will soon be back so let's hope goal prediction um yeah i'll go for a 2-0 and that's not too conservative no 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 that's the same result as city had against them uh, in february but i hope that we will score earlier than city did 2-0 would be good. Yeah, any win would be good to secure this, the third place and maybe keep the pressure on Chelsea. I don't know, but they are playing um, uh, their Champions League uh, semi-final um, at Barcelona on, on the weekend. So there's a chance to come closer to Chelsea and, and make pressure on them. <laughs> Let's try it. Emirates is our home. Our last results were... Always winning 2-1, 4-1, 3-1, 1-0. Let's forget the first match of the season against Liverpool. Was there something? I, I don't remember. So let's get it uh, five in a row now. And I'll go for 2-0 and for three points. Come on, you Gunners. See you on Sunday at the Emirates and afterwards at the Tollies. Bye. So it was a little bit conservative, really, wasn't it? 2-0. Um, but, I mean, absolutely any victory will do. Of course it will. And, you know, we, we said last week, didn't we, we got the opportunity to 
gain some points on Chelsea because they were playing in the FA Cup and we did it and then they win their game and we've got the chance again here and we'll probably take it and then Chelsea will probably win. But anyway, uh, we can only do our job, can't we? We can't worry about other teams. We just have to win our games and, and do what we can. And we should beat Leicester, let's be honest. We should definitely uh, beat Leicester. Uh, Hannah Hannah says, uh, I still have faith in Mary to so play for Arsenal. Um, yes, obviously she's a good goalkeeper, great goalkeeper. And there's been all this talk about her coming to Arsenal. And if we was to get her, then yeah, brilliant. You know, she's an upgrade definitely on what we've got. No question about that. So be a good sign. In my personal preference, I think I've made it clear enough, is Daphne Van Domsela from Aston Villa. I think she's younger. I think she's better. And I'd love to see her um, at Arsenal. But I'd take Mary Oates if we can't get her. Absolutely. Uh, but let's see um, what happens. Uh, Terry says, what has Andreas been taking? 2-0. They must be powerful drugs. Well, maybe he's just trying to play it down a little bit. You know, he, he, I think he said 2-0. Was it 2-0 or 3-1 last week, wasn't it? Uh, Greg says, oh, no, only two. We'll score at least four in the first half. Uh, the players are confident and playing well. Yeah, no, I, I'm... I tend to agree. I think Leicester's heads won't be on it after what happened to them last week in the Cup. So I think that this is a big opportunity for us to really, yeah, the confidence is there. Um, you know, we, we're playing at the Emirates. There's a big crowd. Uh, and I don't think Leicester are going to be, they're not used to that kind of environment, that sort of atmosphere as well. They've got nothing to play for, as Andrea said earlier. They can't, you know, they can't get relegated. They can't really get any higher up the league much. So, yeah, it, you know, they've had a good season. Uh, they've done well in a the cup. They've survived another season in WSL. They've had a great season. And yes, these are the sort of teams where if, if you've got a lot to play for, they're the sort of teams you want to play at home, aren't they, towards the end of the season where you're probably going to win just because your level of intensity is going to be just a little bit higher. And at top level of sport, and football in particular, you only have to have an extra 1% or 2% intensity over the other team and you'll probably win. Um, and obviously, we've got better players anyway. So, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree with you, Greg. I think that we could score quite a few goals in this game. I think we, we took our chances last week um, and I think we'll do so again. We did score six against Leicester away from home, six in one half in the second half. Uh, I know each game's different and it won't be a, a similar game, I'm sure. But, um, but yeah, I'm confident we can score goals on Sunday. And I think, I think the key may be how long it stays at nil-nil for. If Leicester can frustrate us, um, and it stays nil-nil for quite a time. We've seen it happen before. You know, he mentioned the Liverpool game there, what happened. But we're in a totally different place now than we were. And it's a fair point, isn't it? Man City only beat them 2-0 at home a little while ago. But I do feel as though the circumstances of this game with what happened to them in the Cup, and I say the fact that their season's over, when they were playing Man City, they could still have got relegated technically. So they probably were more determined to try and get something. I'm not saying they're going to come over to the Emirates and lie down and, and let us tickle their belly. No, they're going to give what they've got. But I just feel as though mentally you, you're going to, they're going to be maybe 2% off what, they would be if they had more if they had something to play for, and I think that makes a difference in these type of games. So, so yeah, I'm I'm confident we'll we'll win the game. I'm confident we'll win the game um, pretty comfortably as well. I'm kind of with Greg on that one. So um, I'm going to give my prediction. I, I said five nil last week, and I was right. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go 4 0. I'll go 4 0 this time. Not quite as big a win. Uh, Greg says definitely our biggest win this season. Well, yeah, I, I'm not sure it will be, but I, I think it's going to be 4 0. Um, Terry says Andreas hasn't bought his shares in Leicester City, has he? No, I'm sure he hasn't. Um, I mean, a 2 0 win will do, a 1 0 win will do, let's be honest. But uh, it's you know, we, we've our goal difference is much worse than the other two teams because we've struggled to score goals earlier in the season. But we got five last week. I'm sure we'll get... I'm going to go 4 nil, but I wouldn't be surprised if we score more than four. It does depend maybe on how quickly we break the deadlock. If we can get two or three in the first half, I think at the Emirates with the crowd, we're not just going to sit back in the second half. I think we'll push on and get more. Um, so let's see... Uh, Greg says, we've won a trophy. You can see the confidence this has given the goals. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean... Not only the fact that we've won a trophy, the fact that we beat Chelsea again in the final, I think, really has given us confidence. You could see that last week. We looked as though a cloud had been lifted a little bit, didn't we? You know, we've been playing some of the WSL games this season. We've almost been 
I don't know what it's been. We've not quite flowed and we haven't maybe had that confidence, but we do seem to have had it now. And this is a great opportunity, as I say, to really put another big, big victory on the board. And yeah, put a little bit of pressure on Chelsea. I, I, I think it's too late. I don't think we're going to catch either of them two or, or them or City, if I'm honest. But as I said, let's just win our games. We win all our games, do what we can do. We'll definitely finish third, which is the minimum that we have to finish. We've won the Continental Cup again, probably the minimum after last season that we had to do. And that's all we can do, isn't it? But yeah, I'm confident it's going to be a good game. I'm confident that we'll win. Um, there you go. Uh, Terry says, our oh, controversy between panel members. Well, it's not really controversy, is it? It's, uh, it's just, you know, I, I just think we'll win a lot more easily than, uh, than Andreas has given us maybe credit for. But anyway, um, as long as we win, that's all that matters. And um, obviously, as we said, Andreas is his flight's been delayed. Apparently, we're hearing um, due to thunderstorms and stuff, which isn't surprising, is it? He's not going to get any better weather here um, than he's got over there, is he? When he lands, but yeah, so unfortunately, his, his flight's been delayed. But he'll be here, um, raring to go on Sunday. So yeah, if you do see Andreas at the Emirates, do say hello. And of course, afterwards, as he said, he's going in the tolly. So get yourself in the tolly after the game. And I think Amar's going to the tolly as well. So you can see, you can meet them both in there afterwards. And I'm sure they'll be in good spirits because we've won the game. So that'll be good, won't it? Greg says, I'll go a conservative 7-0. I mean, there's no reason why we can't score seven against them. Absolutely not. We scored six away. The Emirates is our new home, as we've said. We, we're confident playing there now. We've scored a lot of goals here this season um, against the Leicester team that have got nothing to play for. So, yeah, we could easily get seven. But um, I just think that... you. You don't get too many scores like that in the WSL these days, do you? Games are generally um, a little bit tighter than that. You know, I think teams are fitter now than they used to be. They're a little bit more organised and it's more difficult to get those big scores. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm going to go four. You go seven. That's fine. Terry says, blimey, Greg, have these two got to you? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I said four nil. I said five nil last week. Come on, that's pretty good, isn't it? You know, I, I, I got it right last week, so who knows? But, yeah. To be honest with you, let's just win the game first. Let's get the game won, whether it's in the first half by getting a few goals or whether we have to work a bit harder. Let's get it won first. And then once we've got it over the line, we can then look at rattling a few goals later on, can't we, to boost that goal difference and stuff like that if we, if we get the chance. Um, Greg says, I think I must have. No, nah, it doesn't matter. Does it? Seven in will be great, won't it? Um, I say I'll be happy with, uh, with, with any win, really. I think it depends on how we play, doesn't it? I mean, if... If we don't play particularly well and we maybe scrape a lucky 1-0 against a Leicester team, you'd probably think to ourselves, oh, is that really good enough? Is that the sign that this team are going in the right direction? You'd probably have to say no, um, even though we've got the three points. But I think if we were absolutely batter them and for whatever reason the ball just doesn't go in, whether their goalkeeper has a blinder or a, we hit the post and we hit the bar and all this kind of stuff, it doesn't fall our way and we end up getting a goal and winning 1-0... I think we'll be happy and say, well, fair enough, the performance was good and that'll be fine. Um, but I'm more about how we play. You know, if we, I want to see a similar performance to last week against Bristol City. I want to see us take the game by the scruff of the neck and just show no mercy. Don't, you know, be ruthless and relentless and, and keep going and keep going. And, and yeah, show that this team is, is building something for the future going forward for next season. You know, forget what's happened. Forget those silly defeats now. Let's just, I say, get get some big wins, get the season finished well and give us all some excitement looking ahead to next season. And I'm sure that's what will happen. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I think we'll win comfortably. Um, it's just about how many goals we can get. As many as possible, please, would be nice, wouldn't it? Um, so, yeah, let's, let's, let's give that a go and see how it goes. Um, but, yeah. Um, so another, hopefully another comfortable three points, another great game of football, uh, another big crowd as well at the Emirates. Well, wow, just um, what an amazing, what an amazing season it's been. OK, we haven't won the league. Um, we haven't even qualified for the Champions League. But we didn't play in the Champions League this season. I mean, we didn't qualify this season, but what an amazing season it's been, you know, with the Emirates crowds, the, the, the following that we've had, obviously winning a cup final and everything that went along with that. And yeah. And I'm I'm pretty pretty happy with how things are at the minute at the club. And yes, we want obviously more next season, and that's what we have to try and aim for. Uh, Terry says, mind you, LJ Havertz is better than Russo and Steena. <laughs> oh, let's not go down that route. Let's not go down that route. Um, but but yeah, I mean, um, I've I've enjoyed this season. There's been some frustrations, of course, and you know, I expected us to. At the start of the season, I expected us to challenge for the league a lot 
more than we've done. I obviously expected us to be in the Champions League and we we didn't make it. So there's disappointments and frustrations, but I think as the season's gone on, you, I can see something really building with this team and this group. And yeah, I think the signing of Emily Fox is almost the final like um, piece of the jigsaw a little bit, I think. So, but yeah, we still got to make sure we retain a few of these players for next season, add one or two. It'd be good to go to goalkeeper. That's that, it's got to be the priority, hasn't it? I think the men need a striker, the women need a goalkeeper, and they're the two priority positions this summer. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's hope that uh, we get that sorted. I'm sure we will, but yeah, let's just finish this season well. I'm looking forward to Sunday, and hopefully, it'll be a big three points and we can uh, we can enjoy it. So, so that's pretty much it then for the Arsenal women's show. The weekend is now officially here. We can say that now, can't we? Um, Greg says, at least the women's team keeps a smile on their faces. Exactly, yeah. I mean, that was really, really key last Sunday, wasn't it? After the Aston Villa game where we all felt so down in the dumps about life and football and everything, you know. Um, and then the women played straight after and produced that performance, which which did, didn't it? Bring that smile back. We was all almost, we hadn't forgotten about the men's game, obviously, um, but we'd almost put it to the back of our minds for a little while because the women did what they did. And that's the great thing, isn't it? And that's what they tend to do more often than not. Well, there's been one or two frustrating games this season when that hasn't happened, but overall, um, over the last few years, they, they've been the team that's kept us all sane through the madness that's going on elsewhere. Uh, Terry says, these girls must be disappointed in themselves uh, next season. I said, yeah, no, I'm sure. I don't know about disappointed. I think they'll be frustrated, won't they, with certain results, certain matches that we should have got better results in. We all know that. They know that. The manager knows it. Everybody knows it. So, um, But I say we can't change that now. All we can do is build forward win all these games that's left, finish as high as we can and then regroup for next season and, and put all these, put that frustration and disappointment, if that's what it is, put that to the channel it in the right way and make sure that we don't, uh, that we don't do it again next season, that, that we become the real deal. Uh, and I'm sure next season is going to be even better, isn't it? And it's going to be good. And hopefully you'll stay with us and enjoy it. I mean, I've, no, I've started noticing over the last... Um, through the course of this season, actually, it's not surprising with the crowds that we're getting. You know, I've noticed one or two other channels are now doing um, regular shows on the Arsenal women's team, which is fantastic to see. You know, it's um, it's great that other people are now starting to not only um, enjoy watching the team, but actually enjoy um, doing a show once a week to, to talk about it and promote it and all that kind of stuff. So it's great that... Um, that there's other channels now doing it. And I'm hoping next season we can maybe collaborate with one or two of those channels out there that are covering the women's team as well. Um, and, you know, do some more stuff, get more people involved and all that kind of stuff and try and move our show forward. You know, we've, we've been doing this now for four, four seasons, four years, well, four seasons. And it would be nice to, you know, I just want to, I want to try and expand it next season. I say, looking at some of these other channels, watching what they're doing, it's brilliant, isn't it? That, that the women's team are now getting um, some more regular shows out there on YouTube. You know, there's, there's million and one shows for the Arsenal men's team. Whenever there's a men's game, you can literally spend the rest of the week watching different shows on various different channels and stuff like that. And that's great. But it's good now that there's a lot more women's shows out there as well. Um, and I enjoy watching them and enjoy listening to other the other uh, channels as well. So, yeah, we'll look at maybe trying to incorporate some of these channels with us next season, maybe get one or two guests on, swapping over channels and stuff just to get some different, uh, so, some different perspectives and different points of view on as well. Um, and, of course, you know, we're not going to move away from what uh, we've done well over the last few seasons. It's going to, you know, obviously we're keeping our, our panellists as they are. Obviously, we're not going to... We're not going to get rid of them yet, are we? No, of course not. Uh, but I so say we just want to maybe, you know, try and build something a little bit different for next season as well. Try and just freshen it up a little bit and do some more different stuff. So uh, we're looking forward to that. But I say for the rest of this season, we'll keep plodding on. And uh, yeah, there are some great other other channels out there that are, that are doing it as well. So have a look out for them, them guys as well. Um, and yeah, support um, support everyone that supports the Arsenal women. That's what we need to be doing, don't we? You know, it's none of this. Um, it's none of this rival or anything. Oh, you're going to take views and people away from us, and we're going to take them away from you. No, let's all just join together. Let's all just um, support each other, help each other, and just enjoy the fact that we're all um, here every week chatting about this great team, this great club, 
Um, and that's what it should be about, really. So, yeah, we're all for in favour of that 100%. I love seeing other channels doing it. Um, and, yeah, you know, it's, it's good It's good to see, isn't it? Um, Terry says, blimey, four seasons, that's flown by. Must be good, otherwise it would have dragged. So, well done uh, to you, Richard and the boys. It has gone quick, yeah, I must admit, it has gone quick. And it's been it's been quite a journey, hasn't it, actually? Um, you know, some great people have been involved in the show. Um, some have come and gone. You know, Matt's not around anymore on the sh on the on the show. Um, I'm not sure where he's gone actually, but anyway. Um, so yeah, you know, we've had Harry come and go and people like that. It's been great. Um, and I say we're hoping next season we'll get a few new people involved as well. So just to keep it just to keep you on your toes as well, shall we? Um, but this has always been my favourite show on on the channel that that we do, you know, the, the women's show has always been my favourite one. Um, the women's games and watch alongs of the women's games are my favourite ones as well. And that's no, that doesn't mean I don't enjoy the men's stuff. I do, um, but it's just finding this um, kind of little community that we found for the women's team. It's just been great, you know. Not only on the channel but in real life as well you know at the games and all that kind of stuff so yeah it's, it's been great and it's definitely my the friday evenings are my the highlight of our week i must admit i look forward to them and obviously if there's a game at the weekend as well so um and that's down to you lot as well isn't it um terry says uh, sorry forgot to say and some great banter and chat from the chat I mean, indeed yeah so i'm saying you know the, the the chat's growing as well isn't it i mean obviously i'm not going to get as much this week because it's not like a proper show with all the guys in uh, you know, due to the circumstances and whatever, but um, it's still been great. And obviously next week we'll, we should be back to normal, shouldn't we? Because um, obviously Andreas will be back um, and I'll be back and we'll be normal. It'll be a normal show next week. So join us for that. Definitely. Uh, Greg says, you've done a fantastic job. You'll always be the best. Well, thank you, my friend. I hope so. I, I'm glad that you, that you guys enjoy it. Um, and it's not, it's not necessarily about being the best or whatever it is. It's just about enjoy. I, you know, I enjoy doing the shows. Uh, the the, the, the panellists enjoy being on, I know that. And, you know, it seems like you guys enjoy watching it. And that's what's important. Um, you know, if if anything else uh, is on top of that as well, that's even better. But I just I just want I just want you guys to enjoy what we do, you know, because as much as we enjoy making these shows for you, you know, that's what it's about, isn't it? So um, and getting comments like, like that from yourself, Greg, is, is brilliant. You know, it's what makes it. It makes it, it makes it worthwhile as well, doesn't it? To know that there's people out there like you guys that always, um, you know, they're always here every week and enjoy it and put your comments in and enjoy the show. And that's it, it's it, even if nothing else, it, you know, even if even if the no one else was here and it was just you guys, it'd be worth it just to know that you guys are here watching and commenting and enjoying it. That's what it's about, isn't it? Uh, Terry says, a question for you, Richard. How did you get Andreas and Amar involved? Yeah, I mean, what happened was when I had an idea to to do a weekly show on the women's team, um, I kind of I was in a few kind of groups on Facebook, social media, WhatsApp groups, etc. And I just put the question out there and I said, you know, look, I'm starting this new show on the Arsenal women's team. Does anybody want to be involved um, on the show on a regular basis to chat about the uh, the women's team? And there was a few people responded. Um, obviously, Harry was one. Matt was one as well. Um, so, you know, they got involved through that. There was one or two others that sort of, I think, wanted to do it, but for one reason or another, maybe didn't quite have the confidence to come in front of the camera and do it and stuff like that, which is fine. You know, we understand that. That's not a problem. And, of course, Andreas said that he got in contact and um, he basically said, you know, obviously he's in Germany. Um, he's a Bayern Munich fan, but he, he's been, follow he'd been following Arsenal for a long time. He was on a, he's on a, a German women's football podcast. Um, and uh, he just, you know, he said, look, I'd, I'd like to be involved, but I'm in Germany. And I was like, well, you know what? That doesn't matter. <laughs> we don't care. Um, and, you know, he, he's it's been great actually meeting Andreas through this. It, you know, obviously we've met in real life a few times now at matches and stuff. And um, he is so passionate, isn't he, about um, about women's football, about the team, um, and about the show, you know, the fact that he, he can't be on the show and he'll go away and he'll research and bring us statistics and stuff like that to put on the show is, is incredible. It really is incredible. And, um, you know, it, it's it's amazing, really, isn't it, that we've managed to find the guys that we've got 
it's been brilliant and we're lucky aren't we and hopefully going forward we can maybe um get a few more people like that as well that we can find out there so if if you know anybody if you're out there yourself you may be watching maybe you contribute to the chat maybe you don't um if you'd like to come on the show let me know send us a message or leave us a comment in the chat i'll get in touch with you and we can get you on it'd be great to get more people involved you know because women's football's growing the arsenal women's team have got so many fans now i'm sure that there'll be people out there that'll be quite happy to have a little light-hearted conversation about the games and about the team and giving score predictions all this kind of stuff you know and if that's you you'd like to be involved or maybe if you're a little bit shy or you're not sure um you know Give it a go. You'll enjoy it. Honestly, you'll enjoy it. You know, you've seen what we're like. We're, we're, we're a friendly bunch. We have some fun. Um, and we talk about something that we really, really enjoy. So, yeah, if you want to get involved, let us know. And we'll be more than happy for you. You know, even this season, if you want to get involved before the end of this season, fantastic. But certainly next season, we're going to be looking at maybe trying to get some new people involved and try freshen the show up, really. That's all. So if that sounds like something you might want to help us out with, if you want to get involved, you want to chat to this great uh, about this great club with some real real great people that love the team get in touch we'll be it'll be great to get you involved have you on um greg says hopefully sky doesn't poach him well i, I think andreas is going to get on sky sooner or later don't worry about that um i don't think there's any doubt uh terry says what a great person andreas is you don't meet many nice people in life like him absolutely no he, he is he's incredible isn't he that, um, there's no other i mean i can't put into words um how great it's been um meeting andreas um not you know through the show and to be able to meet him in person and to meet someone that's that that passionate about the same thing that i'm passionate about and you guys are is is amazing and the fact you know he he's he travels over from Germany and he was so worried, you know, Andreas, at the beginning, he was so worried that people wouldn't um, accept him because he's German. And, you know, we know the history of England and Germany and all this kind of stuff. Right. Um, and he was worried. He's genuinely worried that he wouldn't necessarily be accepted for that reason. And I'm like, no, absolutely. Not, not, don't, don't worry about that. And it's been great that not only has he been accepted as he should be, but just the fact that the impression that he's made on everybody, you know, with with uh, with. The contributions that he that he's made every single week is fantastic and and yeah I I, I can't uh, I can't you know give, praise him enough really and it's been such a privilege to um, to to know him it's, it really is a privilege and if anyone I say if anyone's at the Emirates on Sunday or in the Tolland and and you do meet Andreas and you see him please say hello please say hello because he's he's told us some great stories of people that he's spoken to that have recognised him um uh from from the show and stuff like that you know that, that that's it's great isn't it so if you do see him do say hello because he'd love to meet you um and he's definitely the uh the big friendly giant because he is about uh six foot eight he's very tall and he's a big guy but he's he's brilliant so yeah definitely say hello because it'd be great um terry says yes can't stand him but yeah we know terry we know that <laughs> but no i mean it, it is great actually isn't it so yeah i say if if, if you want to be involved in the show whether it's now next season whatever let us know we'd love to get you involved we'd love to get you on and give us you know you can let us know how you got involved with the women's team why you, why you follow the women's team and chat about the, these great players this great team and hopefully next season We'll have a lot of exciting things to look forward to, won't we, with um, the league title challenge and all this kind of stuff and stuff. So, yeah, if you want to get involved, come and join us. We'd love to have you. Um, so that is the Arsenal Women's Show. So, yeah, we've beaten Bristol City 5-0. Fantastic performance at Meadow Park. We've got over 40,000 tickets sold for the Emirates on Sunday against Leicester. Incredible. Uh, let's put in the sort of performance that, of course, um, we, um, we expect nowadays in these sort of games. Another three points will do nicely and we'll move on. Now, don't forget, coming up on the channel, of course, tomorrow evening, late 7.30 kickoff on a Saturday. What is that all about? Anyway, we are kicking off at 7.30 tomorrow. The men, of course, away at Wolves. It is last chance saloon, isn't it, for the Arsenal men's team tomorrow. I have to win anything other than a win at Wolves tomorrow. Of course, Wolves of the ground, of course, where we were at a couple of weeks ago for that cup final. Um, can the men's team go there and get a similar result? Um they need to, quite honestly. It is last chance to lose. If Arsenal don't win tomorrow night, that's the season over. The league title will be over, almost certainly. Um, and, of course, everything else we're out of now. So, yeah, 
Um, so that's going to be good. Join me at quarter past seven tomorrow night for that one. Looking forward to it. But yeah, it's such a big game now, isn't it? We need to bounce back from those last few performances, which have been poor, really. Um, so join us for that quarter past seven. Of course, Sunday, the game from the Emirates, this game that we've been looking forward to. Uh, kicks off at two o'clock at the Emirates. So we'll be here at quarter to two um, with all the build up and everything else and looking ahead to the game. We're going to enjoy it, aren't we? So lots to come, of course, on the channel. Um, next week, of course, on Tuesday, the men are back in action again against Chelsea in the uh, Premier League. Um, so we'll be here for that game as well. Join us for that next Friday, of course. What else will we be doing on next Friday night here with the Arsenal Women's Show? Andreas, of course, will be back. Amar will be back. It's going to be good. So join us for that one. We'll be looking back on the Leicester game and, of course, looking forward to... Um, is it... Oh, is there... It's not a game next weekend, is there? Actually, in the women's team. Let me... Uh, I keep getting confused. There's so many games going on. There's so many things going on. Let me just double-check before we go. I need to make sure what we're doing. Um, Let's have a look. Oh, there is. It's Everton. Everton next Sunday away. Um, that's the early kickoff, actually, next Sunday. So, yeah, we'll, we'll be here for next Friday for the show. Look into that Everton game. Look back on the Leicester game. Um, so, lots coming up this, this week, as always, on the channel. Um, and if we get time, we might throw in one or two other bits and bobs as well. I keep saying that, don't I? I never get time to do it at the minute. Um, this week, I thought I was off work. I'll do some stuff, but I never got a chance to do it. We were too busy catching up on jobs we haven't done for ages. Um, and what else is there? Um, yeah, I've actually filmed some other little videos today. So I'll put one of them on the other channel later on. And obviously a park run tomorrow. Should be a park run tomorrow, hopefully. That'll be good. Um, so that'll be on the other channel as well. So loads of stuff there as well. Uh, Greg says, thanks for another great uh, night. Uh, best you all. Uh, night with Terry. Keep the faith. Well, we'll keep the faith, my friend, always. We always try and keep the faith, don't we? Uh, Terry says, great show again tonight, Richard. Uh, good job you have broad shoulders. Greg, take care, mate, and see you soon. Uh, Coming, you're going to go. Hit that like button before you go. Yeah, give us a like before you go. It's always nice to uh, see a few likes on there, isn't it? Um, makes me feel as though you are actually out there watching and you are paying attention and you are enjoying what we do. Um, so I say, join me tomorrow night, quarter past seven for the men's game and of course Sunday for the, I say the big one, they're both big games, aren't they? For Sunday, a quarter past, quarter quarter to two, sorry, because it's a two o'clock kickoff uh, for Sunday's game. That's going to be good. I say loads of stuff during the week as well. More midweek games, more fun and games next week. Well, it's non-stop, isn't it? It's non-stop. And I still get time for me part ones, hopefully, as well. So, you know, I'm busy. I'll keep myself busy. I'm back at work on Monday as well. So it's all going on. It is all going on. Um, anyway, yeah, thank you guys for watching, as always. Thanks for your comments. Thanks to Andreas for those uh, the videos contribution. Fantastic. It makes a show, does it, let's be honest. I'll just be sitting here on my own otherwise. It's nice to have um, the videos to keep me company um, and keep you guys as well. So thanks to Andreas for that. Thanks to all of you guys, I say, for watching. Give us a like. Don't forget to join us tomorrow at quarter past seven for the big one at Molyneux, um, a venue that holds a lot of happy memories for us over the last couple of weeks. Let's hope the men can bring us another great memory there um, tomorrow. Terry says, come on, Arsenal, get our out. Well, let's win tomorrow first, then we can worry about our at the end of the season. I just want to keep winning, let's be honest. Um, so thanks for watching. The weekend now officially starts. The Arsenal Women's Show is done. Uh, so thanks to you guys for watching. Thanks to Andreas for the videos. And I will see you tomorrow night. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Enjoy your Saturday, whatever you're doing. Don't let Arsenal spoil your weekend. Because this week we're going to win two games. So it can't be spoiled, can it, this week? Cannot be spoiled this weekend. And the sun might be out. Greg says, surprised you're not popping down for the uh, park run Sunday. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I'd, a marathon distance is maybe too much for me, if I'm honest. I have done a half marathon. I've done the Great North Run a few times. Um I'm now more focusing on 10Ks and 5Ks is what I like doing. I've got a 10K race at the beginning of May that I'm doing, so I'm doing a bit of training for that. Um, I would like to do the London Marathon once just for the experience of it, if I'm honest. Um, but it's just the training, isn't it, that you have to put in the time. is It's hard enough training for a 10K, if I'm honest, the time you have to find to do that, let alone, you know, when I was doing a great North run, the training for that, it, it takes up a lot of your time and, yeah, unfortunately, I've not quite got the... I just don't have the time to do it. And have I got the motivation, really? I don't know. I'm enjoying what I'm doing with my park runs and, and my 10Ks and stuff. I'm, I'm happy doing that for the time. I would, But one day, I want to see if I can squeeze one in a London Marathon one day, maybe. We'll see. Um, I'll be watching bits and pieces of it on the telly, of course. Uh, they're inspiring, aren't they? All those people. I mean, that, that's something that really, really has inspired me through life. You know, watching... 
you know, your, your average person, if you like, or they're not average people, are they? People that do the London Marathon are far from average. They might call themselves that, but they're not, either, let's be honest. Um, I find it really inspiring, you know. It, it doesn't really matter what the story is either. Just to see somebody put that time in to go and do a London Marathon, raising money for charities and stuff, is it, they're amazing, aren't they? And it just inspires me all the time to keep going. You know, every day when I think, oh, you know what? I'm not sure if I can feel like going for a run. You have a bad day at work. And then I just think about those people that are out there in the wind and the rain training for these things like that. And it's like, if they can do it, I can do it. Got a part one on a Saturday and you see, you know, guys in their 70s, women in their 70s going and doing park run. It's like, wow. They're just, they, it almost takes my breath away how inspiring that is. It's incredible. And, you know, everyone's inspired by different things, I guess. But for me, that is one thing that I just, you know, I try to um, speak to these people when I see them on a, every week and just say, you know, well done for, for going out there and doing it. It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, yeah, I'm inspired by it. I'll definitely watch the London Marathon. And every year I say I watch it and think I'm going to do that next year. But it gets to, like, um, October and I'm like – can I put that training? Have I got the time? Would I put the time into it? Probably not. Uh, Terry says, if I can get you in the London Marathon next year, I can get you. Oh, can you? Oh, you see, you shouldn't say things like that to me because then that makes me think, oh, actually, why not then? <laughs> we'll have to, I'll have a think about it. I'll have a think about it, Terry. I'll let you know. Um, Terry says, we do work for Greenwich Council. Oh, well, okay, look, right. That's a challenge, isn't it? That is, I'll tell you what, I've I'll think about it. I'll, I'll watch it on Sunday and it always inspires me. And I, usually I'll watch it and go out for a run when it's finished just because I've, I'm so motivated. Um, but I, I would like to do it once, yes, just for the experience of it. Even if I walked half of it, doesn't matter, does it, I suppose? Um, I'm a little bit too competitive, though. That's the problem. Once I get going, I want to run it all. Um, if you put the training in, it's not a problem. But it, I don't know. I, I want to do it. Yes, I, I'll I'll sleep on that one. <laughs> but thank you very much for the offer, Terry, because that would be amazing. Obviously, getting in, it's tough, isn't it? Just getting an entry. Um, but we'll we'll see. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely. That's definitely uh, um, definitely got me thinking. So yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see then how that goes. But I wouldn't mind. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing it definitely. Um, well, okay. Well, that's it for the Arsenal women. So yeah, obviously, if you are running London Marathon Sunday, well, congratulations to you. Um, good luck and everything else. And I'll be watching. Uh, from the comfort of my TV, I have to be honest, but I will be watching and cheering you on. And I'll be out doing my part one on Saturday. I'll do I'll, I'll do my own part one. I've got a, I've got a couple of races coming up as well, not that far. Um, Terry says you defo won't want to walk anywhere around. London. Well, yeah, that's true. Actually, <laughs> that is very true. You, you want to, you need to be running. You need to be on your toes, don't you? For certain. Um, so yeah, but uh, yeah, good luck to everyone doing a London Marathon on uh, on Sunday. But um, yeah, well. Fantastic. Um, so that's it then. That's the Arsenal Women's Show. Uh, we got a little bit sidetracked. We always get sidetracked about something, don't we? It was it was the London Marathon this week. And why not? It's it's a magnificent event, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, I look forward to, to seeing a bits and pieces of that. Um, so, yeah, um, thanks for watching, guys. I said thanks to Andreas and to you guys. And I'll see you tomorrow at quarter past seven. Oh, big game at Molyneux. We love big games at Molyneux, don't we? Uh, let's hope we're celebrating another big win for the Arsenal, eh? Um, and of course, we'll see you Sunday as well. Come on, you gunners. Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy. Ta -ta.